Well, in this week's cardiology news, we'll be, have uh, a study of high sensitivity troponin in outpatients, also a look at vitamin D in a randomized trial for hypertension, and uh, nutritional guidelines from the American Diabetes Association. So to begin with, we have um, a very large study from the Morgan Biomarker Project, the Scottish cohort, that studied 15,000 uh, stable outpatients with uh, 10 plus years of follow-up to see whether high sensitivity troponin could be helpful in risk prediction. Now, interestingly, with this high sensitivity assay in stable outpatients, about three quarters of them tested positive, um, and slightly more men, 82% versus 67% of women. When uh, these patients were looked at those who were negative, it was about a two and a half fold higher risk of cardiovascular events. Um, and when added to other risk models, this did add um, in some degree to risk prediction by the net reclassification and better C statistics. And so while we think of troponin for acute coronary syndromes, it looks like it may be useful in stable outpatients to help in overall risk prediction. Next up, we have a randomized trial of vitamin D. This is the vitamin du jour uh, that is garnering great interest in large part because of observational studies linking low levels of vitamin D to higher cardiovascular risk and uh, hypertension. This was a study that looked at use of vitamin D in high doses to try and treat hypertension uh, and studied um, about 160 patients randomized to receive 100,000 international units every three months uh, and followed in a randomized fashion these patients for biomarkers of endothelial health, uh, blood pressure, et cetera. And uh, as you might guess, it found absolutely no difference in any of the markers studied. The blood pressure was identical and all the biomarkers were similar. And so it's a very early and small study looking at the effects of vitamin D, but again raises some caution in extrapolating other observational studies to uh, the use of vitamin D, which seems very prevalent in uh, our practice that I see in my cardiac patients. And the top pick this week is a position statement from the American Diabetes Association on nutritional consults. And this is something that we kind of think of periodically when seeing many of our patients. And uh, there's about a 20 page document that outlines what a nutrition consult could do and offer. Uh, first off, they say that obviously the goals will be to help maintain weight, achieve glycemic control, get good blood pressure um, and, uh, and cholesterol levels. And to do that, they recommend that there should be referral to a uh, registered uh, nutritionist um, at the time of diagnosis uh, or first evaluation for diabetes. And this would generally involve three to four encounters followed by an annual uh, follow-up visit by the nutritionist. Now, the things they could discuss are different diets. We've heard a lot about Mediterranean diet, but also obviously low fat has been the traditional one, or um, low carb has been one that's worked. Um, the DASH diet, uh, also a useful one, or vegetarian diets. And so one could tailor diets to meet individual needs. But interestingly, there are two pages in a table of the different components of things that the nutritionist would evaluate and then make recommendations on, including energy balance of uh, what type of exercise would balance out uh, the, the food intake, uh, nutritional mix uh, and eating patterns vis-a-vis -vis timing, glycemic index, and, and much more. And so I think a very useful review uh, that we'll have a 10 points to remember on as well for the, the quick look, but uh, something I think is a useful component of our overall treatment of patients with diabetes and uh, cardiovascular disease. So for this week's Cardiology News on CardioSource, I'm Chris Cannon.